Now that the face side of the blade has been addressed, the next step is honing the bevel. So in this segment, I'll cover reestablishing the primary bevel and honing the bevel using a honing guide. So the first thing we need to do is to set the blade in the honing guide. And the easiest way to do this consistently is to make yourself a jig. The jig is just a simple block of wood. I made this one so that I have registration for chisels on one side and plain irons on the other. And mine also has three different angles set into it, 25 degrees, 30 degrees, and 35 degrees. To use the jig, we take the blade, set it into the honing guide, put the face of the honing guide against the edge of the jig, and then advance the blade till it touches the fence. Then we can lock everything in. The amount of projection that your blade should stick out beyond the front of the honing guide and therefore the distance that you should make this fence from the edge of the block of wood is going to depend on your particular honing guide and the angle that you're honing at. Your guide should come with instructions that should tell you how far this blade needs to stick out in order to hone at a certain angle. This particular honing guide has projections for chisels and plain irons cast right into the side of the honing guide. For this particular blade, I'm establishing the primary bevel at 25 degrees. If the blade needs to have the bevel angle changed or have chips in the edge repaired, you do that by starting with your coarsest stone or your coarsest paper. In this case, since I'm going to be working on the primary bevel here, I'm going to start with my 220 grit paper. I'll place the guide on the paper and place the bevel in contact with the paper. And I'm going to put, use my fingers to put pressure over the bevel as I push forward. Now you want to be careful using sandpaper because you could buckle the paper or cut through the paper with the blade on the forward stroke. So when using sandpaper, it's not a bad idea to put more pressure on the backward stroke and lighten up slightly on the forward stroke so that you're not pushing too hard and taking the chance of cutting through the paper. And I'm trying to keep even pressure at this point because I want to make sure that I am reestablishing this bevel nice and straight. I don't want to put any camber in this blade yet. If I intend to put camber in the blade, I'll worry about that in subsequent steps. And I'll make maybe 25 to 50 strokes at a time. And then I'm going to stop and check my progress. You can see here, this bevel still has quite a long way to go. So I'll continue maybe 50 to 100 strokes at a time until I get a nice primary bevel. Okay, and I think these last few strokes should probably do it. So now you can see the bevel is side to side, all the way straight across. It extends completely across the face of the iron. You might notice that we haven't honed here these corners yet, and a little bit at the bottom, and that's because this blade was honed probably closer to 20, 20 degrees before, or at least ground closer to 20 degrees before. So we're increasing that bevel angle slightly here, and that's okay, over time, this'll all come down. What I'm really most concerned with here is making sure that I have an even scratch pattern across the entire surface and that that edge 
at this point is nice and straight. We have that here, so there's no need for us to go any further at this point. Now, unless you're planing nothing but extremely soft woods like eastern white pine, 25 degrees is probably going to be a little bit low of a bevel angle for most steels. Um, it's just going to be, it's, it'll be, it'll be a very sharp edge, but it won't be a very strong edge. So for working with most furniture grade hardwoods, we want to increase that bevel angle just a little bit to provide a little bit more strength. So the reason we went with 25 degrees for the primary bevel is to get that bevel established and get the steel out of the way. Now we're going to increase that bevel angle to 30 degrees and hone that edge to a mirror polish just like we did on the back. However, we're not going to have to hone and polish the entire bevel. We're only going to have to do the very edge of it. And that's the benefit of going up to 30 degrees. We're going to create a secondary bevel or a micro bevel. So we're going to reset the blade to 30 degrees by loosening our honing guide. And now I'm going to use the 30 degree fence on my jig. And I've now set this up to hone at 30 degrees. And I'm going to go and jump all the way up to 400 grit. And I'm going to make a few passes on 400 grit just to see what it looks like. Okay, so I only made maybe a dozen strokes. And what I'm hoping you can see is that we have now a sharper, steeper, but smaller bevel at the very tip of the blade. And that's exactly what we want. We're only going to be honing and polishing that very small secondary bevel rather than the entire bevel. Now it's at this point that I want to start to think about whether or not this blade needs camber. If it's a smoothing plane iron, and I'm going to put camber in it, but I'm only going to put a very little bit of camber in it, basically just easing the corners ever so slightly, because I'm going to be taking extremely thin shavings, but I still want to maintain the full width of the blade except tapering off at the very corners, then I'll wait to put that camber in until I'm at a much higher grit. However, I'm going to use this for a jack plane blade. So I'm going to think about starting to add the camber now because it's going to take some time at the higher grits or, or lower grits, I should say, in order to ease those corners back to establish that camber. So I'm going to start to establish the camber on my 400 grit paper at this point. And then once I start to establish the camber, I'm going to follow the process of cambering the iron up through all of the subsequent grits. Now to add camber, we need to remove more steel from the corners than we do from the center. Now, as you recall before, I was keeping even pressure over the blade to try and keep that bevel nice and straight. Well, now I want to curve that bevel slightly which means I need to really focus pressure on these outside corners. A honing guide like this with a narrow wheel is going to make cambering a little easier because it will allow that honing guide to tip and rock a little bit. A honing guide with a wide wheel uh, doesn't work so well for that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put pressure just over this corner and I'm going to make, let's say 15 strokes. Maybe that was 15. Now I'm going to come to this corner and do the same thing. 15 strokes. Now I'm going to move fit my finger in slightly closer to the center, but not over the center. And let's make 10.
do the same thing here. Just to the left of center, or my left of center, we'll do five. Just to my right of center, five. Well, let's see what we've got. Now, I hope I'm hoping you'll what you'll see here is that we're starting to get a curve to the edge of that. It's not so easy to see if you look at the very edge itself, but if you look at the line where the 25 degree bevel intersects the 30 degree bevel, the grinding marks, you'll see they have a little bit of curve to them. And we can continue to increase that curve by repeating this process as many times as necessary. I'm going to increase it a little more. So I'm going to go through this process at least two more times, making 15 strokes on the corner, 10 strokes a finger width in, five strokes just to the side of center. We'll do that two more times and see where we end up. There, I think that's good enough for this blade for now. So now what I want to do is to work up through the grits just like we did for the face side. So I'll start with my 600 grit. So what I'm hoping you noticed I did there was to rock my pressure, make 10 strokes or so here, and then here, and then here, here, and here, just like when we were adding the camber. Because I want to make sure I polish this blade in the same arc, the same camber that we just put in on the 400 grit. And after changing the paper, now we'll work up through 8, 15, and 2,000. And then after I finish polishing the bevel, I mentioned earlier when we talked about the face, how we'd only have to touch the face on the highest grip. The reason we do that is because when we hone the bevel, we raise a burr on the back side, on the face side. So as we finish honing the bevel, we just make a couple strokes on our finest grit just to remove any last traces of that honing burr. And we now have a polished bevel and a polished face. Now, after finishing your honing, there are a bunch of ways that you can test the edge to see how sharp it actually is. Some people will shave some hair off of their wrist. Um, Another popular method is to cut end grain pine because white pine is such a soft wood. If you can cleanly slice some end grain pine, your blade should be plenty sharp enough for anything else. Of course, the most fun way to test the blade is to put it in a plane and use it. All those other methods are kind of arbitrary. The feedback I get from the tool in use is really the best determinant for me of whether or not my blade is sharp enough for the work that I'm doing.